Have you ever wondered why the ancient Greeks couldn't see blue? It's not a trick question but rather an intriguing journey into the depths of human perception and the evolution of language. Let's take a step back and think about it. We're all familiar with the rich tapestry of colors that paint our world. From the vibrant hues of a sunset to the subtle shades of a morning dew, color is an integral part of our lives. But what if I told you that our ancestors, the ancient Greeks, had no concept of the color blue? Yes, you heard it right. For them, the azure sky overhead and the cerulean sea stretching out to the horizon might not have been blue at all. This might seem strange, even impossible to us. After all, blue is everywhere, right? But if we delve into the ancient Greek texts, there's a glaring absence of this color. No mention of a sapphire sea, no description of a cobalt sky, not even a hint of a turquoise toga. Now imagine being an ancient Greek artist tasked with painting a seascape or a sky. With no concept of blue, that's no easy feat. It's almost like trying to bake a cake without any flour. Sure, you might end up with something edible, but it wouldn't quite hit the mark, would it? But let's not get too carried away with our modern-day color conundrums. After all, the ancient Greeks were no strangers to creativity and innovation, so how did they perceive the world around them? Did they see the sky and the sea as we do? Or were their perceptions shaped by the limitations of their language and culture? Could it be that the world as they saw it was a different spectrum entirely? Perhaps they saw not a blue sky but a bronze one, and the sea to them was not azure, but wine dark. So, did the Greeks wake up to gray skies every day? Stick around as we unravel this mystery. The answer might just change the way you see the world. Could you imagine a world without the color blue? Quite difficult, right? Now let's take a moment to ponder how language shapes our perception of color. It's a curious concept, isn't it? The idea that the words we use can influence how we see and understand the world around us. This is known as linguistic relativity, a theory that suggests our language significantly influences our thoughts and worldviews. Just think about the countless shades of blue you can name. Sky blue, navy blue, turquoise, and so on. But what if you didn't have a word for blue? What if, like the ancient Greeks, your language lacked a term for this color? Fascinatingly, in the rich tapestry of ancient Greek literature, there's no clear term for the color blue. Instead, they used descriptive phrases, referring to the sea as wine dark and the sky as bronze. Now, you might be wondering, why does this matter? Well, it matters because language is our primary tool for categorizing and making sense of the world. Without a term for blue, the ancient Greeks likely perceived the color differently than we do. It's not that they couldn't see blue, but rather that they didn't recognize it as a distinct color, separate from others. And here's a fun fact, this linguistic peculiarity isn't unique to ancient Greek. Several other ancient languages, including Hebrew, Chinese, and Japanese, also lacked a specific term for blue. Perhaps it's no coincidence that blue is one of the last colors to appear in many cultures' color vocabularies, often showing up only after a society has developed synthetic dyes. Before we delve deeper into this intriguing topic, a quick reminder to press that like button and subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us continue to bring you fascinating insights like these. If you can't name it, can you see it? Let's explore this further. Do you ever wonder how we see colors? It's all about light and our eyes. Let's dive into how this color show comes to life. To start, light is the key player in this game of color perception. Light waves from the sun, a lamp, or your phone screen, for instance, are composed of different wavelengths. And it's these varying lengths that give us different colors. Imagine light as a symphony, each wavelength a different instrument playing its part. The shorter wavelengths play the cool blues and violets, while the longer ones strum out the warm reds and yellows. When all these wavelengths hit your eye at once, you see white light. But what happens when light meets objects? Well, objects like an apple or a leaf absorb some wavelengths of light and reflect others. An apple looks red because it absorbs all colors but red. The red light is reflected back to your eyes and voila, you see a red apple. Now, let's talk about the star of the show, our eyes. Inside your eye, you have light-sensitive cells called cones. These cones are tuned to detect short, medium, and long wavelengths of light corresponding to blue, green, and red, respectively. When light hits these cones, they send a signal to your brain which interprets this information as color. But here's the fun part. Color perception isn't the same for everyone. Different cultures perceive colors in different ways. For instance, some cultures don't distinguish between blue and green, treating them as shades of the same color. This is a testament to how our experiences and cultural backgrounds can shape our perception of the world around us. So, if our eyes can see blue, 
why couldn't the Greeks? The answer to this riddle lies not in the science of sight, but in the evolution of language and culture. But that's a story for the next scene. So, stick around and let's unravel the mystery of the ancient Greeks and the elusive color blue. Ever thought about how our ancestors saw the world, maybe not in the same colors as we do? The evolution of color perception is a fascinating journey. It's a tale of gradual recognition, of how our ancestors started to identify and name the colors they perceived, ultimately shaping the way we see the world today. One of the most intriguing chapters in this tale revolves around the color blue. Believe it or not, for a significant portion of human history, the color blue was, to put it simply, missing in action. It wasn't that our ancestors couldn't see blue, they just didn't have a name for it. In fact, in the earliest written languages, there's no word for blue at all. The ancient Greeks, for example, described the sky as bronze, and the sea as wine dark. It wasn't until much later that the color blue was introduced in literature and art. So, why blue? Well, blue is a bit of a rarity in nature. It's not a color often seen in wild plants or animals, and it's not a color that's easy to create with natural dyes. The rarity of blue might be why it took us so long to notice it and give it a name, but once we did, it began to pop up everywhere. Blue started appearing in art, in literature, and even in our clothes. The Egyptians were the first civilization to produce a synthetic blue pigment. And from there, the recognition of blue took off. And as blue started to permeate our societies and cultures, it influenced our perceptions too. We started associating blue with various concepts and emotions, from tranquility and sadness to loyalty and wisdom. The color blue, once overlooked, now holds a prominent place in our world. The evolution of color perception is a testament to our ability to grow, adapt, and understand our world in new ways. It's a reminder of how much our perceptions are shaped by the language we use and the cultural context we exist in. So, the Greeks could see blue. They just didn't know it yet. So, when did blue finally make its grand entrance? Enter the Egyptian civilization around four and a half thousand years ago. They were the first to produce blue dyes leading to the color's initial recognition. This was a turning point, not just in the world of color, but in how we perceive our surroundings. Blue was no longer a colorless void, but a hue that held meaning and significance. From the endless sky above to the vast oceans that cover most of our planet, blue suddenly became a part of our everyday lives. It represented both the unreachable heavens and the mysterious depths, becoming a symbol of divinity, depth, and wisdom. The recognition of blue had a profound impact on society. It transformed the way we communicate, the way we express ourselves, and even the way we think. It's fascinating to consider how something as simple as a color can influence our understanding of history and culture. The Greeks may have been unable to see blue, but their lack of a word for the color doesn't mean they were colorblind. Rather, it highlights the interplay between language, perception, and culture. It's a testament to humanity's ability to adapt and evolve, to continually redefine our understanding of the world around us. The story of blue is more than just a tale about a color, it's a journey through time, a peek into the evolution of human perception. It challenges our understanding of reality, and invites us to question the things we often take for granted. So when you see the color blue, remember its journey. From being an invisible part of the spectrum, to becoming a symbol of depth and wisdom, blue has come a long way. It's a testament to human curiosity, and our unending pursuit of knowledge. So. The next time you look up at a blue sky remember, it's a color centuries in the making. Be sure to share this video with your friends and family and let's spread the knowledge.